My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha, the Omega, all time belongs to him. All of the ages, to him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord Guide us and protect us. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Whom entreats he, the light of Christ? Deo gratias, thanks be to God. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound the Lord Almighty King's triumph. 
be glad, let earth be glad as glory plants her. I'll blaze with the light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, Fill with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for the sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, Wipe clean the record of all ancient sinfulness. These men are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when whence you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire Banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now, throughout the world, sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his Holy One. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O Lord, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault, that turned so great, so glorious a redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores the innocent to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those on earth and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, 
nor work of deeds and your servant's hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, called to the honor of your name, may persevere and him who will overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets, Christ, your Son, who, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was so formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the water, to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called it the dome, the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into the its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind, kind of plant that bears seed, every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit within its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. 
God made two great lights, the greater one to gov govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created gr the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teemed, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In his image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that mo move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that seed-bearing fruit on it to bear your food, and to all the animals of the land and all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed and understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud, also leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, 
right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptians, the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst, and the water flowed back. It covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horses and chariots he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned, among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When in their sight I prove my holiness through you, For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you, and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, who by the pages of both testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption 
so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that you, we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourself as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Spirit. Be with you. 
gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the tomb, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went quickly away from the tomb, fearful, yet overjoyed, and ran to announce to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on the way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> was a scientist by training. Specifically, he was a biologist. He was an amateur philosopher as well. He read Plato and Aristotle, Aquinas and Erasmus, Kant and Spinoza, Nietzsche and Whitehead and many, many others. He also read the Bible, for he believed that no education was complete without reading the Bible. But he read it as a scientist, not as a believer. He felt the Bible was valuable because of its contribution to civilization. He had a positive response to the Bible. It was morally persuasive. It was impressed. He was impressed with things of Jesus. He liked the nonviolence, the sense of forgiveness, the love of enemies, all very positive stuff. As impressed as he was, he just couldn't come to embrace the miracles wasn't possible for him to accept the idea that God would break into our reality, move against space and time, alter the physics of things. He could not accept them as anything but symbolic. At odds then with two major miracles of our faith, he found himself, the Eucharist, my goodness gracious, bread and wine, into the body and blood of Christ, resurrection, 
My goodness, when you're dead, you're dead. While the scientist's position might be extreme, it's not that uncommon in the world in which we live today. Like Mary Magdalene and the others, they worried about a stone blocking the tomb. They were filled with all kinds of difficulties, disbelief, fear, shock. They assumed once they got into the tomb that the body was stolen. Our way to the meaning of this empty tomb is, is also blocked. Maybe not by a stone, but by a little bit of the scientist in all of us. How can this be? Yet it is the basis of all that we believe as Christians. It validates everything Jesus said and did. If Jesus is raised from the dead, he is then the Son of God. Everything he says about himself, everything he says about the Father, everything he says about life and death, everything he says about us has to be true. Without the resurrection, we can really just take what he says and take it or leave it. But with the resurrection, with the resurrection, everything he says has to be true. St. Paul tells us that if Jesus was not raised from the dead, then our faith is in vain. But how can we know definitively that Jesus is raised? Are we really convinced? Do we believe the testimony of others who were eyewitnesses to an empty tomb? Who will roll away the stone of uncertainty for us? Let's look at the Gospels for a moment. Every one of them makes it clear that the empty tomb alone did not convince even the eyewitnesses that Jesus was raised, with one exception. In John's Gospel, it says that the Apostle John saw and believed. It's the only instance of where there is absolute belief at the moment. However, all of the others were confused and all of the others were in doubt. How did they come to believe and believe so strongly, so strongly that they were eventually willing to give their lives for that belief? It was for each of them a personal experience of the risen Lord that did it. For Mary Magdalene, the apostles, his appearances to them. For Thomas, who we'll hear about this next weekend, the encounter that has him actually, actually touch the wounds of Jesus. For those on the road to Emmaus, in the breaking open of the words of scripture and in the breaking of the bread. For St. Paul, the mystical experience resulting in his blindness. We can't explain the resurrection simply by the empty tomb. We can't explain the resurrection simply by the eyewitness accounts or by the experiences of others. We understand the resurrection in encounter with Jesus Christ in our worship, in our prayer, in his presence in the Eucharist, in his presence in the word, and in the lives of others who joyfully witness to us that Jesus Christ lives. The stone that blocks our way is our desire to have certainty about our beliefs. The stone that blocks our way is our doubt that death can be overcome, indeed has been overcome. The stone that blocks our way is the all too human desire to live by sight and not by faith. The stone that blocks our way is our unwillingness to meet the risen Christ on his terms, not on the terms that we usually come to expect our own. And what are his terms? He comes to us in our obedience, in our faithful service, in our worship, and in our trust. My goodness, think of those words. 
our obedience, our service, our worship and prayer, our trust. We live in some very difficult times. We just celebrated a Holy Week that is so unique for all of us. And there is this temptation to ask the question, where is God in all of this? Where is Jesus Christ? Where is this risen Lord? Are we able to trust that indeed he is with us? Are we able to trust that in the experiences we see in the Acts of the Apostles and in all of the histories of our church, of all the witness that was given to this Jesus who constantly is with his people has brought a sense of wholeness to his people. Can we trust that in all that goes on in the world around us, and particularly these days, in terms of this virus, that with all the difficulties we experience, Jesus indeed is risen and lives with us. There is no stone. There is no no tomb that we have to look at. Jesus is not behind the stone. He's not in the tomb. He's right here. He's right among us, and he lives in the lives of all those who reach out and do their very best to be his hands and his feet during the difficult times. He is here with us as he gives us strength to deal with all the difficulties, not to take them away miraculously, but to give us all of the grace that we need to overcome these difficulties. Jesus is not dead. He is not in a tomb. There's no stone blocking him from entering into our lives. But we have to trust. We have to believe. We have to know that behind every Good Friday comes an Easter. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism, of our incorporation into the risen Lord. May he graciously renew us, that we may be reigned faithful to the spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter will receive baptism and in this season be incorporated ever more deeply into the life of the risen Lord. And this we ask as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do and all his works, I do. and all his empty promises. I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered death and was buried, who rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Let us bring our prayers, our petitions, all our cares and concern to the God who cares for us, for the God who is filled with compassion and love. For the Holy Church of God, that our members be strengthened to bear their share of hardship for the sake of the risen Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in public office and all those entrusted with the common good, that God guide their hearts and minds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that they become more united in sincere love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from the cur current pandemic, that they receive the care they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions and welfare of those who cannot receive the Eucharist in these days, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful in the Diocese of Charleston, that they grow in union with and love of the risen Christ this Easter season, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that they may see the face of God and live. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we bring our prayers and concerns to you, for we know you hear and you understand our every need. Answer the prayers we have offered, those that we have spoken, and those that lie deep within all our hearts. Hear us, answer us according to your will, for we make all our prayer through the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, 
bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our daily help. Amen. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Jesus, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Creo, Jesús mío, que estás real y verdaderamente en el cielo y en el santísimo sacramento del altar. Os amo sobre todas las cosas y deseo vivamente recibirte dentro de mi alma, pero no pudiendo hacerlo ahora sacramentalmente, venid al menos espiritualmente a mi corazón. Y como si ya os hubiese recibido, os abrazo y me uno del todo a ti. Señor, no permites que jamás me aparte de ti. Amén. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament 
one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I'd just like to take this opportunity to, to say thank you to a few folks, first of all, to all of you watching and participating in this liturgy uh, through the internet and through various ways that you offer your prayer with ours. Uh, many thanks to the uh, Father Gray and the seminarians who all week, or since we've been in lockdown, so to speak, have been able to provide mass here every day and all kinds of devotions and certainly have been able to pull all of this together tonight in terms of the beauty of the chapel, etc. To the Cathedral Schola, thank you for, uh, for the Chrism Mass and, and for tonight. And uh, certainly uh, to all those who have uh, made it possible through uh, our, um, what you might say, um, infant use of technology, we keep learning uh, how to use the technology better and better. And we know there have been a few mistakes this week, but uh, it's been a great learning experience. Uh, to our seminarians and these two deacons who will be ordained priests in the very near future, uh, I hope and pray that you never have to experience a Holy Week like this one, uh, although you will probably never forget this one uh, for the rest of your lives, nor will I. Please bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in Easter joy. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. A blessed Easter to all.